past decade, people have been saying how 3D printing and 3D scanning would change the way we do our hobby. It's clear that 3D printing has definitely become more advanced, but what about 3D scanning? Has it lived up to the hype? Technology changes rapidly, and a year ago we explored this, and it's time to take another look. This video is sponsored by Creality, and they have sent their new toy for us to play with. So let's see what this new handheld scanner can do. It's tabletop time. 3D printing really is changing how we all approach the hobby, whether it's printing just a tiny little component to add a bit of flair to one of your characters, or printing an entire mountainside. And scanning might just be the next best thing next to it, as it allows you to duplicate an item you've already created by hand, or just a real world item, like a car or my face. And then take that, print it down to any size you want, and as much as you want. So immediately you can see the possibilities for what scanning could be used for, and that's what we want to look at today. Now the scanner we're going to be using today is the Ferret Pro 3D. And as you can see here, it is nicely parceled in this little carry case. And it boasts three primary components. The scanner itself, a wireless bridge, and what is basically a selfie stick with a battery plugged into it. It all screwed together really quickly, and I stuck my phone in, and now it's time to go scan something. It's me, it's Dave, and I actually filmed the last Creality video where we looked at the previous scanner and one of the things that it did really well or this 3D scanning software works really well for is actually scanning people. So we want to try that again because the previous scanner was a lot more cumbersome to portably scan and this looks really good for it. And I made Jen as a sister of battle. I made Gareth into a trooper and today we're scanning... Me! Murray! What are we going to make you, Murray? We're going to start with the face first and if that works out really well, uh, we might try the whole body. Maybe it could be like a screaming peasant running from something. I love that model. <laughs> so let's go. Jen's got the thing. We're gonna try it. How do you feel about your digital self? Uh, my head looks about as empty as it is in reality, so <laughs> it's getting uh, top grades for accuracy. I love looking at the inside of your face from the from the yeah. top of your head. I'm entering the Matrix. It's the poster from the Mummy. So from filming and observing the scanning process, one improvement I did note was how much more portable this was. Also, it seemed to lose tracking less than my recollection of the previous attempt. Due to the handle on this thing, scanning people is definitely easier than ever. However, the AI interface in refinding the model that you were scanning when it loses that tracking, that is really intuitive and really good at finding it again. Yeah, even a year ago, I actually had to abandon scans several times due to it losing tracking and the model becoming confused, but the ferret didn't do it once, which was nice to see the software has come a long way in being able to refine the topology while scanning. Now it's immediately evident at looking at this that one part that scanning still struggles with is hair. Human hair, it's so complex, reflective, and the scanner still struggles to perfectly capture it. It's a bit of a mess, but you can fix that later. In fact, you could circumvent that by using a swimming cap or something like that. However, let's see how good it is at doing something that it's not recommended for. Some train, this barrel, which is really cool. And the idea that you could scan real world objects and shrink them down to use as scenery for your role play games, tabletop war games, that's really cool and interesting and opens up a lot of avenues. So we're gonna see how well this scans and then we'll see where we go from there. I think one of the most important things you could do is firstly have a really good light source. Whether you're working near an open window, you have a nice lighting setup, or even if you're just working outside with how portable this is, that's definitely one of the secrets to getting a really nice finish to these scans. And I feel also a little turntable or a lazy Susan really helps in getting the best out of the model, as you don't have to worry too much about losing tracking as you can just slowly turn the turntable. All right, we're back, and this actually really worked really well. We've managed that. Can we go just a little bit more miniature related? Hands up if you remember this guy. Now we know scanners do struggle with tiny, tiny little miniatures, but what about a slightly bigger miniature? And the possibility that you could scale him up or scale him down, maybe even scale him to epic scale. So let's see how well it works with an actual miniature. To be honest, I was concerned that the scanner wouldn't be able to capture all the detail and angles in the same way that scanners generally struggle with small miniatures. However, I was absolutely delighted to find that I had absolutely no holes in these models. Really all I need to do is slice off the turntable at the bottom of the base and I could basically just fill that and hopefully print it. Even the color photo scan turned out really nicely. Hey. 
it's time to talk about the scanner I'm using and the sponsor of this video, Creality. This is the CR Scan Ferret, consumer grade scanner for use around the home and the workplace. This model, the Ferret, comes with a few perks and upgrades to talk about. Namely, anti-shake technology to accommodate human wobbliness and shaky hands. Multiple modes, settings and markers to better allow you to scan dark and reflective surfaces like cars and machine components. The scan also features advanced optical technology and an increased intelligent algorithm, which is to say the camera is good at adapting to sunlight and operating outdoors, which coupled with just how portable this little device is, allows for even more possibilities of where and what you can scan. But if that isn't enough to wet your technological gizmo inclined palette enough, there's more. The scanner boasts a two megapixel high res camera, face mapping technology, as well as accuracy resolutions down to 0.1 millimeter and the ASIC chip, which will take the processing load off of your PC or phone. Combine that with the speedy Wi-Fi 6 wireless bridge, it's this device that allows you to be super portable and have the option of not being tethered to a computer. With the scanner configured with the wireless bridge attached, you can run hands-free using your phone or a laptop, or potentially even a desktop that's nearby. And you'll have yourself the bandwidth for all the high-speed data transfers required to scan an entire human. We call that foreshadowing. The scanner and software is intuitive and extremely easy to learn, and I think my learning here today is the perfect example of that. So thank you Creality for sponsoring this video, sending us this toy and allowing us to poke the boundary of our hobby to see what is possible. But now, Back to the video. So my optimism and expectations has actually really risen after how successful these guys have come out. So I'm gonna do something that we know doesn't work very well with scanners, but I'm gonna give it a go anyway. I'm gonna see how well this can turn out. Honestly, I don't really expect it to, but I'd really like the comparison between something that works and something that maybe doesn't, because there's a lot of detail on this. Oh, a little hatch fell off. Shh, tell no one. So I'm gonna set this up, and with the experience that I've gathered working on all these other models, hopefully I can get the best out of this. But we'll see how well it goes. we dual wielding technology, which is, I don't think this is a good idea, but it's kind of funny. Ah! This is harder than it looks. I do honestly really like the tracking technology that lets it refine very quickly where you are up to. And the fact that you can just sort of hover on an area and it keeps tracking and working out what's there. That's really good. Just waiting till it, the model turns green is really intuitive. If it's not obvious, I don't have a lot of experience doing these scanning things. The concept of me being able to just pick this up and get working scans is probably testament to how far the technology has actually come. Time for a change of scenery, back in TTT. And quite honestly, I'm surprised at the results. There were some things that I expected and some things I didn't. I knew that the underside was gonna be a bit dodgy because the scanner can't really get in there without actually lifting up the tank, which is fair. It did struggle with the geometry of like all the grav panels. I didn't expect it to almost perfectly scan the pintle mounted gun, which is amazing. Of course, it struggled with the aerials. That's sort of just one block. The technology is definitely getting better. Pretty much 80% of the top of the tank was perfectly fine. At this point, my personal feelings is that it's interesting to see how much the technology leapfrogs every time a new iteration or something comes out. We've scanned my face and that's worked amazingly. What if I can put myself on the tabletop as just a tiny little person? That would be pretty cool. And I think that is exactly what hobbyists would like to see this technology for. Uh, here goes nothing. I'm gonna get Jen and she's gonna scan me. So let's go find her. All right, I'm nondescript peasant Murray. Time to get scanned. Now, while the scan had shown to be exceptionally good at picking out just my face, as we'd seen earlier, unfortunately, we ran into some difficulties while we were doing an entire body. That meant that we had some errors, particularly in my legs in the scan, which meant that you couldn't just take it directly and print it as is. It could have been down to our use of the device, but it felt like the longer the scanner tried to work on a large object, the more likely it was to run into some difficulties that it couldn't quite recover from. It could be fixed, but that would require quite a few hours of expertise and knowledge on how to fix such problems. So as much as I wanted to get this printed and done to show off, unfortunately I have literally failed myself and I'm simply going to have to be happy with a few really nice scans off my face and these printed Space Marines. I 
A huge thank you to our patrons who support us every month. It is you that allow us to do these crazy two videos a week and deliver such wacky and passionate projects to you. If you'd like to join up to our patron and support us, we also offer our exclusive patron Discord, which allows you to see behind the scenes for some role plays, as well as teasers for projects we're working on, and of course, access to our monthly mini review in which we get to check out what all of our patrons are working on and give feedback and critique as asked. So if any of that tickles your fancy, the links are in the description. However, the question wasn't, can we scan something completely perfectly and print it in one go? It was, how far has this technology come in one year? And I want to say that it's come along in leaps and bounds. We couldn't do half of the things that we did one year ago. It is now possible to capture even more fidelity and details on what we're scanning, as well as having a lot more intuitive control both over using the device itself and how it captures and recaptures once it's lost tracking on that object. So my final thoughts on the matter is that in terms of our hobby, this technology is not perfect, but it is so darn close. This could be quite an accessible and possibly quite popularized method of recreating anything and just putting it into your imaginary world for RPGs or tabletop games. Hopefully my bumbling has also shown you just how quickly you can pick up this technology in literally the space of a video. All of this was achievable with just a few given hints and suggestions and the rest of us me blindly working it out for myself. And I think that alone speaks volumes of just how good the technology is now. Now I'd like to give another huge thank you to Creality for sponsoring this video and allowing us this little foray into scanning one year on, and I'd love to see how things turn out another year later. Until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.